Welcome back to Tar Heel Illustrated.com or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner and joining me as he always does, our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we got to watch Carolina this morning on Saturday. Uh, open Another open practice, had another scrimmage as well. Going to dive into that and talk a little bit about what we saw and some of our takeaways from it. But before we do that, going to blast a promo that you guys, I'm sure, have heard many a times from us. We're going to keep doing it until it runs out. Sign up before April 25th on our website, tarhillillustrated.com, which you can get to just by clicking the link in the description below. You'll see it in there. And don't pay until August 1st. Like we've said, ton of access to our premium uh, boards, ton of access to our premium content. The only way you can get that is if you're signed up on our site. So just head on over there. Use the promo code NC free when you sign up. And like we said, before April 25th, and you won't pay until August 1st of this year. So really good time to be over there with all the basketball stuff going on, with all the stuff going on in fo- uh, spring practice and football and in recruiting as we cover that all the time. So just it's a ton of really stuff well going too. On. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably it's been fantastic. Unbelievable. So mm-hmm. Good time mm-hmm. here to run it with all the stuff going on. Yeah, it's going you're not lying. Well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really – we got a really good community over the, there as well. You know, really fun to interact with. Got a lot of good people on that site. So, after this video is done, of course, head on over to TarHillIllustrated.com and take advantage of that before the 25th. But, AJ, let's do it, man. We're here to talk about Carolina's 11th practice of the spring. Before we kind of dive into a few plays and a few moments from the scrimmage that I'd like to talk about, any initial takeaways that uh, that you kind of took away from this morning's practice and scrimmage? Well, e- yeah, even before the scrimmage. I mean, the scrimmage is great, but I love watching drills. I, I'm mm-hmm. kind of a, you know, I'm, I'm one of those baseball seam head guys. When, when mm-hmm. I covered, I covered the Orioles a little bit in 1997. I love going out there for batting practice and watching guys. I mean, I remember watching Jeff Rebelay take infield, you know, flipping the ball to second base for for two. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. I love that kind of stuff. I love drills in basketball, and I absolutely love drills in football. Yeah, I do think one. you can learn something from them. You can kind of get a gauge for a guy's motor and stuff. And what I really liked about the drills today it was especially when they had the offensive line, defensive line that were kind of going at it a little bit. And uh, there were some – I'll tell you what, Diego Pounds. Diego Pounds versus Javari Ritzy on one of those reps, which was really a battle. And Diego got the best of them. Jonathan Dorno got the best of Ritzy on another one. And, of course, Ritzy more than did his share. But I enjoyed watching the OL guys go up against the DL guys. It was spirited. It was physical. It was at live speed. And uh, I, I really appreciated having the opportunity to see some of the second and third tier offensive linemen do their mm-hmm. thing. They didn't really have, when I was watching, Keithan was out there for a couple of reps, and I think Ritzy got by him. But it was more the secondary guys, some of the younger ones, like yeah. Pounds as a true freshman. Mm-hmm. But so then when I saw him in the scrimmage running with the twos, which is what uh, William Barnes told us earlier in the week that they're rotating some with the twos. Uh, he looked good there too. So mm-hmm. when when guys around the program are telling us Diego Pounds, Diego Pounds, Diego Pounds, having the chance to see practice and having a chance to see him in that drill, and having a chance to see him in the scrimmage, you kind of fully understand why people are saying his name. So that's just one of, of quite a few things. Now they only did drills for about twenty five or thirty minutes. And I watched mm-hmm. the offensive line and DL and that drill. And then I watched the running backs. I watched the hybrid guys and I watched the linebackers. So I watched, mm-hmm. and then it ended and we had to have that. We had the scrimmage. So I didn't really spend a little bit of time watching the quarterbacks, but uh, yeah, I, I liked the linebackers. Uh, it, they were doing a couple of different drills. What I liked about it was that Jeremiah doesn't have to do every drill. Mm-hmm. He doesn't Jeremiah Gimmel, that is, doesn't have to do every rep. And he does them, and he does them at, at, at maximum effort every time. And you could oh, yeah. see the other guys like, well, he's doing this. I got to do this, too. So there are a mm-hmm. thousand reasons why I like being at practice. And uh, those are just a couple of what I really appreciated before we got a chance to see the scrimmage, which was pretty enlightening as well. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and throw, throw a clip in right here that I, I shot of those, those uh, O-line versus D-line drills towards the end. I told – I don't remember. I don't know if it was you or Dina or Kevin or anything like that. I think it might've been Dina who was there for us. I, I told her that that was in my opinion, cause they do that about every practice we've been to. Um, it was the most spirited and most 
intense and competitive I've seen those guys go at it so far. But there's a great clip in there I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna throw in of Keyshawn Silver. Uh, I don't know who I I didn't get a chance to look at who he was uh, who was blocking him, but let's just say Keyshawn got a little angry and, and threw a little bit of a hand at him, which I thought was was good. But shows the competitive competitiveness of, excuse me of this team where they're kind of at and how they're choosing to go about things in, in, in practice. So that's been been super impressive to see. I was um, looking for a quote that I wrote down. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't do this very often, but I was mm-hmm. putting together my reports and we decided to go ahead and get the podcast done. Uh, I'll, I'll find it here in a second, but I, quote, I wrote down something Mac said. You know, Mac walks around for people that haven't been there. If you're standing outside of Keenan, you know the practice is going on because Mac yeah, you can hear is hooked up to a microphone so everybody can hear him. Although he got really ticked one time today and he turned the mic off and got on some yeah, of the guys. Yeah, he did. That was pretty funny. I forgot it was a penalty or something like that. Yeah, but there was – um, gosh, I wish I could remember. He basically was saying you've got seven minutes to generate, you know, your intensity, generate your mind. Yeah, I do remember that. I do remember that now that you said that. That was mm-hmm. when they were in that drill that we're talking about. And you could just see that just – an elevation throughout the practice field of energy and spirit and intensity and folks mm-hmm. and it carried over in the last 12 to 15 reps in that drill and i just i was going to go watch the quarterbacks do some stuff again i said you know i'm going to watch this this is live raw it's fun to watch yeah it's all on film this is stuff that as we're doing this right now the staff's probably talking about that was i'll tell you what man we've talked a lot about how this team this program has elevated the talent across the board, every position group, even running back. They don't have Michael Carter and Javante Williams, but you know, they, they, like Josh Henderson went last in the drills I was looking at today. He's a four-star kid who looked good last week. Mm-hmm. There is talent in that room, and there is there are options in that room. So everywhere you look across the board, it's just different. And there were a bunch of former Tar Heels that were there, mostly NFL guys, and I would love to have said, hey, so what do you got? What is the difference right now standing here watching this as opposed to when you played a few years ago? Guys like Mitch Trubisky, Jake Vargas, who actually played for Mac his first year back. You had Charlie Heck there, Austin Kroll, Nathan yep. Elliott. I would love to know their take because my vantage point, watching similar type drills now as opposed to a few years ago, mm-hmm. totally different. Just completely yeah. off the charts different. Uh, and, and again, when Diego Pounds, who wherever he is in the depth chart, he, he's not going to start anytime soon. He's a true freshman who, who enrolled early. Look that good. That just goes to show you uh, how deep that position group is. We're running a video Monday about the secondary. And one of the things we noted in there was kind of like how far down the depth chart right now a guy like Cameron Rosman Sinclair is. He was a big time uh, kid coming out of high school, four star kid. And it's not a slight to him, it's just an indication of how deep they are across the board. Diego Pounds is another one of those examples. You know, we noted after the first practice that we got to see a few weeks ago, it's just different. Yeah, it's so it different than before because we didn't get to see him practice last year because of COVID, because of COVID protocols. And I didn't think as much about it last week because I was zeroing in on certain position groups. Mm-hmm. But today I thought about it more. I took a broader look and it was – very obvious that just talent and depth is just uh, so much higher than it has been before. And they actually looked more talented and better today than they did uh, three weeks ago. Yeah, I would agree. I think every time we've been able to see them, they've progressively gotten better. Energy has been arguably better. Every practice guys, the younger guys have looked better. And that's kind of a segue into what I wanted to talk about. I took away and we were kind of watching the scrimmage together before I had to leave a little bit early to get back and hop on the press conferences. But two plays from wide receivers, I thought they're really impressive and quarterbacks as well. And then I got two plays at the running back. So I'll start with the receivers, then kick it to you. I know you remember that J.J. Jones catch um, in the left corner of the end zone closest to the blue zone that Jacoby Criswell just put on a dime. And I thought Criswell, as kind of a caveat to that, looked really good today, looked a little bit more impressive, made some really tough throws and some, and some really good plays. And that catch that JJ Jones made in the corner, I don't remember who was guarding him was, was fantastic to say the least. And another one, which I know you'll remember was that Emory Simmons catch in the opposite end zone. Um, Tony Grimes was all over him. It was a deep ball. I remember why I watched the whole route because I was watching kind of Tony line up against him 
going at it. Emory Simmons just kind of beat him a little bit in the foot race. And Sam Howell just put a ball like we've seen so many times since he arrived at Carolina on a rope to him. I think Emory just about got two feet in bounds and and it was right around the goalpost. So I think his leg even hit the goalpost when he went out of bounds. But on a guy like Tony Grimes, yeah, on a guy like Tony Grimes, man, just a really impressive play, not only from Emory, but a great, great ball from Sam Howell, which I know none of us are really going to be surprised to hear. But before we go on to the running back plays, just your thoughts on that. And like I said, I think it's more of an indication of wide receivers stepping up and making plays, but also quarterbacks really just throwing some impressive balls. Well, Sam is low hanging fruit. If you're outside the program and you're kind of <laughs> dipping your hand into Carolina football to write a story and before you move on to Missouri. He's an easy, like easy, that. easy one. It's an easy one to write about. So a lot of times we don't really talk about them. I guess you kind of take them for granted a little bit. But also, we just go a lot deeper into the program here. Mm. Uh, there's no point in talking, saying the same thing about Sam every week. But I will say this. We said this after, I think it was last week when we saw the scrimmage, that mm-hmm. he looked quicker. Mm-hmm. And he had a play where he darted up the middle again today. Where he just looks quicker. And, and that throw that you're talking about, look, Greatness is greatness. I mean, there's an element of greatness as a college player that is Sam Hell. I think it's, I don't like to overuse that word, mm-hmm. but I think we're watching a guy who's a great college football player. Mm-hmm. And that throw that he made was a great play. And it, it, in order to make a great play that involves more than one person, it means another guy has to do something too. And Emory Simmons did a, I mean, a great job catching that ball when it was well defended by a dude like Tony Grimes. And my favorite thing about it was after he hit the ground, rolled over and his leg whacked against the goal. Yeah, I was a little it was one of those hold your breath moments for a second. Cause it looked like more of his body was going to hit the goalpost mm-hmm. hops up. Yeah. He's a dude. He hopped yeah. up, he had the dude thing. If he was, a, if he, spin the, he didn't spin the ball, but you kind of felt like, God, why didn't he spin the ball? Yeah, they had a lot of he celebration. Had, yeah. He had that kind of moxie. Uh, he had that kind of spirit going after that play. And he should. It was a dynamite play. The other one that you're talking about, you know, Criswell, if you would have squinted, you would have thought that was Sam throwing the ball to J.J. Jones. You pointed out the other day, you asked about, I think you asked Jeremiah Gimmel about some similarities about it, or somebody, I think it was Gimmel. I think uh, it was Gimmel, yeah. About how Sam and and Criswell kind of have a lot of uh, mannerisms that are similar, similar in size. And now what you're seeing is similar in how they throw, you Mm -hmm. know, the the step, the throw. the ball looked like a sand ball, and we're seeing more of that from Criswell. Uh, it was a great play by J.J. Jones, and I'm going to say great because it really was. And the thing that impressed me about J.J., we'll get back to Criswell in a second, J.J. didn't look like a guy that's loving practice in college. No, he, he's been impressive the whole time, really, I think. He has, he's... but I, did, I didn't focus on him the last couple of times we were there, but I did today. Yeah. He made us focus on today. He made us aware that he was out there doing stuff. There mm-hmm. was another play later on. I think it was another Criswell ball that he didn't catch at the back of the end zone. He kind of came up a little gimpy, but he was fighting off the DB. Mm-hmm. He had an older DB there and he was fighting him off. And he's a guy that he's a big dude. He's going to be the, the, the player that, that whoever the next quarterback is through his fades to in the end zone. And maybe Sam does it this year, but he's going to catch a lot of those physical tough balls, but he can also go get it as evidenced mm-hmm. by the 45 yard where he just, he, he got behind the DB and then fought him off. I was very impressed with JJ Jones today, but going back to Criswell real quickly, I know that there's a competition for the backup with May, but he's clearly ahead of May right now. And it's understandable because again, Drake just had 11 practices in college. And if mm-hmm. we go back to two years ago, Sam was in a similar process that Drake is in right now. In fact, Jace Reuter, looked like the best quarterback in the spring game as an example. And uh, Sam ended up winning the job. I'm not saying Drake's going to leapfrog Criswell at some point in August, but Criswell looks like if Sam went down, by the time the season comes, he'll be ready to run the offense. It won't be a modified version of the offense. It will be the offense. And I I think they're in really good shape in that room as well. As Drake is coming along, he made some really nice plays today. He got rid of the ball one time to a running back who was protecting and then released and the rush came and he immediately found him and got him. And it would have been like a four yard gain instead of a sack or a throwaway. So Mm -hmm. um, his his stuff will come. Criswell's already got it. He's a good player. He's a really good player. And uh, really those are great plays that you pointed out because they stood out to me as well. Yeah. And I thought the 
before I move on to the running back, I thought the one of the not I don't know, coolest is the right word, but cool from him after he threw that ball. He looked over the sidelines and kind of pointed like that, kind of you know, like yeah, I just did that. It was a heck of a throw. So yeah, there's, growing there's in confidence too. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's definitely a little moxie there. Mm-hmm. So not too, just, not too much. Just enough. No, 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 not too much, not over the top or anything, but don't know if, you know, maybe we don't see that last year from him. I think confidence is growing with him. And if he keeps throwing balls like that, there's no reason his confidence shouldn't continue to grow. But I talked about two running backs as well that impressed me. Ty Chandler, we're finally starting to to see him out in space a lot more. We're finally getting to see some of the things that Max talked about. I think he talked early in the week about Chandler in some specific scrimmage or practice made a really important block in pass blocking for some guy that was coming in trying to hit the quarterback. And Mac uh, kind of selected that out and kind of mentioned that as something he's doing. I think Mac also said that Chandler quote is, you know, improving and looks better every time I see him. So got to see him a little bit more. It looks really good. You see why he's played at Tennessee for four years and was as successful as he has the way he runs around, the way he gets around is it, super impressive. And it, it's finally good to kind of see him out in space and what he can do. And I've, I've been really impressed with him and then DJ Jones as well looked really good today. He came out a little bit towards the end. I think he was limping a little bit. Maybe he tweaked his ankle a little bit. I know Mac he's mentioned been, earlier he's this been week. Dealing about, with some yeah. Stuff, yeah. Mac mentioned that as well earlier this week about, you know, how DJ's got to stay healthy and, and stop getting banged up and kind of even called him out a little bit in terms of he's got to be able to withstand some of that if he wants to to really play a lot this season. But when he's out there, shifty, quick, he made he he ran over Don Chapman today, which if you look at Don Chapman and DJ Jones beside each other, it's no competition who you think is going to win that battle. And DJ Jones just flattened it. So I think overall what we're seeing from him, what we're seeing from Ty Chandler is kind of the two running backs right now in the, this point in spring. Really impressive. It's going to be hard to replace Javante and Michael, of course, and what they were able to do. But I think the running back room from what we've seen is in safe hands right now with those two guys. I think so, but you got to have three and maybe four. Yeah, yeah. And DJ I Jones yeah. has been. I mean, even Mac, when Mac was talking about, they went back to the high school. And he said he was banged up in high school too. So sometimes guys just get banged up, and coaches have to be able to have faith that they're going to be in the field. That's one of the that's one of the challenges for DJ Jones right now. But you're right. There was another play. I missed the one where he ran over Chapman because I was taking notes. I was like, and you and Kevin, you and Kevin <laughs> reacted. And I mm-hmm. looked up, but of course, there's no replay. And I was taking a note about something from the play before or one of the plays before. But uh, one of the thing that one play that actually stood out to me from DJ Jones was it showed me again another example of his vision, how he senses things. Is he ran off left tackle, and there was a little bit of a hole, but he could sense a defender closing in. But the defender wasn't right there. He was kind of, you know, if you're if it's in a basketball terms like two passes ahead okay or mm-hmm. hockey two passes ahead he sensed it and his vision just darted out that way but he sees a lot some running backs have kind of a narrow very narrow focus i think he can see more stuff and that's makes you said shifty i think that's where some of the shiftiness comes from he ended up getting 15 yards about 15 yards in a play when maybe had he not seen the defender closing in on him he would have gotten hit and maybe got seven or eight instead which is a nice run but if you can get 15 instead of eight, you're going to take it every time. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, Chandler, we saw him turn his nose up the field and, and kind of take off. Mm-hmm. There's this burst that he had when he turned, up, when he turned the corner uh, uh, a couple of runs. And there's a gliding element to him once he does that. He's fast but glides at the same time. So I've been impressed by him. I'm going to add Caleb Hood to the list because Mm -hmm. there were consecutive snaps in which he ran about 40. We were trying to figure out if it was 40 or 50 because we didn't look to see where the ball was snapped. But it was a 40 or a 50-yard run in which he got past a few DBs. Now, if you see Caleb Hood in person and you look at how thick he is, especially, you know, those those thick legs, you might not expect to see a burst of speed so early in his college career. But he had that, got about 40 yards, down to about the 20. Next play did the same thing and got into the end zone so we saw a burst of speed from Caleb Hood that we hadn't seen before we saw more of Ty Chandler turning the corner and in that burst that Mac has talked about and then we saw the well-roundedness of DJ Jones and by the way Jeremiah Gibble said the other day I think he described Chandler as the every as an every down back meaning pass protection and catch passes he can run between the tackles he scored a touchdown in the red zone today running between the tackles and get around the edge 
He can do a little bit of everything, and that's a very, very valuable guy to have, especially given his experience compared to the experience of the rest of that room. Yeah, completely agree, AJ. I've been impressed with what I saw from – like, I'm glad you threw Caleb Hood in there because I forgot about him, but he did have that impressive series where basically, you know, two plays, 50 yards, it was all him, and they ended up scoring on it. So just really impressive to see him continue to develop and saw some things – running outside that you maybe wouldn't expect from him. So, yeah, I mean, overall, I thought the offense looked really good today. Defense looked good as well at times. I thought offense had a little bit more success moving the ball in the defense than they did last weekend in, in, in the practice. But overall yeah, – the offense see... was going – I'm mm-hmm. sorry. No, you're good. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. The offense was going more with their regular starters, and the defense yeah. was mixing stuff up. Come on, mm-hmm. Fox played a couple of snaps. Gemmel didn't play at all. Like your 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 twos at linebacker were Power Eccles and Rob Yeah, Gilbert. Don so, Chapman at nickel the whole time. Don Chapman yeah, just playing a little bit nickel. Different. You know, we're trying to figure out the nickel situation. They're moving Conley back to safety. You didn't see a lot of Conley today, mm-hmm. but uh, so the defense was. There's a lot more guys on defense, mm-hmm. and they're throwing a lot more of them in there. So I, I think that was part of it. But Javari Ritchie did some stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, Javari had he tackled Caleb, Caleb Hood strong. He already runs powerfully, and, and Richie shed the blocker, popped Caleb Hood, dropped him right there for a loss of yardage, and uh, Max says, loss, loss. And then there's a pause. He said, good play, five. I, I can't do Max accent. I won't bother. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's unique. But, it, but as he was doing that, Richie's parents were sitting about 10 rows in front of us over to the right, and his mother was quite pleased with the play he made. He made a couple. He got into the backfield. Uh, Miles Murphy got in the backfield. Mm-hmm. Miles was talking, I think it was last week, about how he's stronger and he's in better shape and he's quicker off the ball. He got in the backfield last year sometimes, but I do think that those guys stood out today on defense. And as far as the rest of the defense goes, it was just numbers. They played a lot of guys. A lot of guys got reps. Um, I do think that you mentioned power. I think power, when we were sitting there, you mentioned power. Power and Rara look more like college linebackers today. Uh, so that's kind of fun to see. We saw the third practice, the eighth practice, and the eleventh practice, and those guys don't look like the true freshmen they did in the third practice. Nobody there really does. Everyone appears to be making progress, especially the young guys. So that was fun to see today as well. Yeah, it's a, it's an impressive team as a whole right now, and it seem to just be getting better and better every week. I think it's a good place to wrap it up, AJ. Anything else you want to add before we close this thing out? No, I mean, we're going to get a chance to see the spring game next week. Yep. You and I are going to do our video. Not far away now, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we'll do one about the offense. Then we'll do one about the defense. We're going to have a lot of stuff we're rolling out. And and we've got a really fun thing coming up, a series that we're going to do of ISO videos and podcasts about individual players. I'm looking forward to us doing. So we've got a ton of stuff that we're going to roll out throughout the off season. There's going to yep. be no shortage of Carolina football stuff between now and when they start, when they open up fall camp in early August. Yeah, exactly, man. It's, it's going to be a fun off season. And before we hop off, got to mention the offer one more time. If you want to keep track of what we're doing, get access to our premium boards where we put scoops and information that we don't run on the front, sign up for April 25th on our website, tarlillustrated.com, and don't pay until August 1st. Great opportunity. And it's only 8.33 a month anyway, regardless of, of the promo or not. So not, we're not trying to steal your money or anything like that. And it makes things a little bit easier for us and allows us to make more content and, and like this and do a lot of things. So definitely head over there and sign up on our website after this video and, and take advantage of that opportunity. But I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. Make sure you go check out the practice reports. AJ's putting off in some defense practice report. We talked to four players afterwards. I wrote a little report on that as well. So a ton of content coming through the whole spring, but from today specifically, we'll have a ton of stuff on that, including this podcast. So definitely go check that out on our website. As always, guys, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.